All right, today's video brought to you by People Online, telling you things that don't really have any science behind them, so let's put some science behind it. More specifically, VRF compressors. Now the conversation goes, do I cut it out with a set of copper cutters, which everybody recommends, or should I just go ahead and save myself some time and hit it with the old Milwaukee? Right here at the suction line and the discharge line. And if I'm really feeling wild, I might grab the Sawzall and cut it out all together. But here's the problem. We have two copper connections and a system that is very particular about contamination, more specifically, copper shavings. So how do we mitigate copper shavings in the line? Well, we would say use this. People say they can use this. Now, the reason they say they can use this is because on this line here, we have a vertical rise up and on the discharge line, we have a vertical rise up. And they say that if you cut this out with this, uh, that the actual particles will just fall down and they won't go up the pipe. And so the contamination is actually zero. Now, I have no science to back this up. So uh, yeah, let's do it and find out. One down, one to go. That's two. Now the Sawzall. People say this is easier, but I did have a hard time even getting this close enough to cut this. Like butter. To keep this uh, trial fair and impartial, it would only be fair to also cut the remaining components out with a sawzall since, you know, again, zero contamination risk. We've got a vertical rise here that you can see. So I'm just going to go ahead and cut it here at the base. Perfect. Let's go ahead and cut the other one out as well. Same thing, right? Vertical rise on my suction. So I should have zero contamination. Wow, that was really easy. Not at all traumatic or definite. All right, so we have our suction line connection here. This is the part that we cut at the compressor. This is the part that I just cut at the bottom there. Remember, vertical rise here and also vertical rise there means zero contamination. This is the Sawzall. Let's actually take a little glance at that. Um, it's not looking good, guys. I can say that much. Now, showing the inside of this pipe and also, my gosh, the maliciousness of this Sawzall is, uh, is a little intense. Uh, so far, we got contamination. But the question is now, how much contamination do we actually have? Let's blow out this out with RX-11 onto a white napkin to see the full length of contamination that we've created with this pipe. All right, next up, we need to cut off the liquid line with the bandsaw, and then we should be done. Now, I would cut it here, but um, it's not exactly um, user-friendly. So, uh, yeah, we'll have to do some bending here to get it out of the way. But, you know, the purpose of using the bandsaw is because of how user-friendly it is. Easy, accessible to the pipe. So, okay, that looks good. easy enough, right? Look at that. I just shaved hours, hours off of this install. And the same problem here on the backside. Um, yeah, I don't think I can actually get the band slam on this. So, because I can't, we just call on our little friend here. The Sawzall. Because he can get everywhere. I didn't damage any other pipes in that process, so uh, that's good. Okay, again, first glance looks here. This is on my master side of my system, compressor connection, and also uh, the other side of my suction line. Now, this one I had to cut with the saws because I couldn't get the bandsaw back there, but this one is the bandsaw. And so, uh, looking inside, we don't see a whole lot of contamination. Maybe it's okay. Uh, the saws all, again, not looking good. If we jump over to the liquid line, same thing, kind of mashed up a little bit at the end connections. 
and same thing over here. So, all right, RX-11 time. All right, so we have it. We have cut our two vertical pipes for our compressor with our Milwaukee bandsaw. We've cut our two other pipes with our Sawzall. One of these connections actually also had a Sawzall, lack of room. And I cut a sample pipe with a pair of copper cutters here. Now, what are we gonna do with it? Oh, well, I just happened to have this uh, 86 inch TV laying around in the office. And so um, I put it under my digital microscope. And as you can see here on the screen, this is a magnification of an actual napkin. So we're gonna blow each one of these pipes out with RX-11 flush to get everything out of these pipes onto each napkin and then look at it under a microscope to see really how much contamination is there from cutting it with these tools here. All right, and the results are in. And uh, yeah, they're not surprising to me, but they might be surprising to some people. Okay, so on our first cuts with our actual bandsaw, as you can tell here, compressor connection, vertical piece, we blew it out with some RX-11, and let's take a look at what it looks like. Uh, wow, really not surprising. So you've got a large copper particle chunk here, you've got a large copper particle chunk here, you've got some small ones all peppered throughout. And now again, this is from us cutting two connections at a vertical rise point. And so the idea here is, and I could go on and on and on and on and on and on, circling all these pieces. And the idea here is it, there's contamination. So if there's contamination, then we have the problem of, you know, exactly what you say you're trying to prevent, that somehow gravity takes these copper particles and only pushes them down. Okay, now let's look at our second piece on our liquid line here. And obviously a smaller line, but it kind of tells the same exact story as we can see here. Oh, even so, a bigger piece there. Look at that. There it is. Now, obviously I'm looking at this under a digital microscope and you could say, wow, those are really tiny particles. I'm really not that worried about it. But again, this is just a small piece of the napkin. The whole point of this conversation is that it doesn't create contamination. However, survey says that's incorrect. It does create contamination, even with a bandsaw. Now let's get over to my favorite piece, which is gonna be the Sawzall. And you saw how violently it cuts things. Um, so you can only imagine what we're gonna find here. Whoa, that doesn't surprise me because again, the teeth on this blade are extremely aggressive. This was actually found upstream of the connection um, on, the, on the actual compressor connection. You can see small ones here and small ones here and small ones here. And again, when we're cutting something horizontally, we assume in our mind that gravity is gonna somehow push it down, right? Gravity is gonna take all those particles and force them down, however, Science tells us that when we cut something aggressively, when those shavings are being sheared off, they fly in every single direction up the pipe. And what's inside of these pipes that we know for certain? Right here, it's on the cusp of the copper piece. It's oil, it's all over the Sawzall blade. It's oil, right? That oil is gonna grab those particles, those fine dust particles, and it's going to hold on to them into the copper. And so when is it gonna affect the system? Let's look at the other liquid line for the Sawzall cut. Ooh, yeah. Ooh, there it is, there it is. There it is, oh, there they are, okay, yeah, okay. So the question is, do we actually get contamination in the copper line when we cut it with a Sawzall or a bandsaw on vertical pieces of pipe? And the answer is, yes, we do. And not just yes, but heck yes, we do. Look at this, giant pieces of copper. They say, well, they're magnified, of course they're giant. But any level of contamination, any copper shavings that get into an expansion valve into the, the actual scroll plates themselves are gonna scar, they're gonna mark things, they're gonna damage things. These flying at a high velocity through a refrigeration system is like a sandblaster. And you're sandblasting pretty much everything in that system. Now, those are our four napkins that we did RX-11 flush on, and I did a control piece here. And this control piece is just a standard piece of copper that I cut with copper cutters. And let's take a look. What do we have? We have a little bit, so it's not immune. Copper cutting all comes down to speed, 
pressure, what kind of tools we're using, what kind of cleanliness we're using. And you can see even here on a clean cut on both sides, we still have a teeny, 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 tiny bit of contamination on the actual copper cut. All the others, extreme contamination. But this one, it's actually not that bad. It's pretty good. So now you know, don't use a bandsaw. Do not use a sawzall. Do not use a skill saw. Do not use a reciprocating saw. Do not use anything with the word saw in it to cut copper. The only thing that you should be using is tubing cutters. And again, we've just proved that there's contamination on all sorts of levels. These are the worst. Don't do it. Be smart about it. Use your copper cutters. Cut out your compressors. Do not unsweat your compressors. This is what happens, right? You get a large flame, blows up in your face. You don't want that. Stick to what we know. Stick to what science tells us that these are bad ideas. Just don't do it. Thanks for watching. If you're willing, give this video a thumbs up and drop us a comment. Don't forget to hit that bell icon to stay updated with all of our future videos. And as a quick reminder, HVAC School isn't just a YouTube channel. Dive deeper with us at our main website, HVACRschool.com. Curious for more knowledge on the go? We've got you covered. Tune into the HVAC School podcast available on all your favorite podcast apps. And while you're at it, join our thriving Facebook group. Also, don't miss out on our free mobile applications available for both iPhone and Android. We're all about community, Vortex by Tex.